Welcome to Cooks and Cars Race Day Nation Edition. I'm Rob D'Amico alongside Michelle Rahal. Michelle, welcome to the program, man. That's great to be here every week, and I'm delighted to be here with our special guest, which you will announce. And um, looking forward to this coming weekend, man. I really am. Yeah, this is going to be a big, big weekend for the U.S., for Miami, for F1, and for racing fans everywhere. But first, before we get into that, this segment is brought to you by The Big Green Egg, the ultimate cooking experience. Log on to BigGreenEgg.com to find an authorized dealer near you where you can shop online and have it delivered to your home for free. So check it out, please. It's BigGreenEgg.com. All right, now let's get into it. We got a big race in Miami. Now, we talked about this before, how the residents wanted to get rid of this race, didn't want it to happen. All the Kens and Karens down there were bitching and moaning that the, it was going to physically hurt their hearing. <laughs> I mean, seriously, <laughs> come on. But now we have it. It's this weekend, finally. I'm so damn excited. I wish I could be there. And I hear it is um, the people that have been down there so far. It's electric, man. Yeah. It's electric. Everybody is uh, the pre, uh, the introduction of the drivers and the party. I, I think even the drivers themselves were just kind of taken aback. Because, you know, a lot of them are very young, have not really experienced something as exciting as the Miami atmosphere. And when they were introducing them, it was, they, I, it, they really looked taken aback. It's like, oh, wow, this is America? <laughs> and it's kind of America, South America is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> there's no doubt. And I will say, it's been cool to watch all the drivers, you know, throwing out baseballs at the baseball games. Yeah. I saw uh, Lewis Hamilton playing golf with uh, Tom Brady, obviously yeah. the champions with the Bucks and all that stuff in uh ray hall's backyard right there in tampa but all great stuff so we have a guest who's down there live in miami right now we're going to bring him on and, and uh one of our favorites to bring on the show here juan pablo montoya joins us live from the miami gp uh in this car ready to go and you are on the track <laughs> today and uh talk about that what is the track like for these guys when they get out there and start hitting it so yesterday was actually, we were doing the first laps on the track yesterday. And I got to say, the guys at the Miami GP did an amazing job. It's, it's crazy. They built a hell of a racetrack and a hell of an event. As you, know, as you guys said, the party last night, you know, we stayed there where they were announcing all the drivers. And, you know, the fans are so into it. It's, it's amazing. You know what I mean? I think it's great to see. It's not... One of the cooler things there is not only how cool the event is, but the track itself. Uh, I was talking to some of the guys, you know, like the McLaren guys and everything, and I was telling them, man, this is, this is tricky. It's like there's a lot of long blind corners that is going to be like, if you don't commit, you're going to be really slow, and if you commit, you're going to hit something. <laughs> <laughs> we watched. Uh, we watched the... You know the not the animated, but the the CG version, the computer generated version, and it. I you know I was a little, I was surprised. You had long straights, but then again, you had a lot of turns. Um, and I, I'm curious with the three DRS zones that they have, you know, the long straights. From what I understand, one of the DRS zones is going to start at the start finish line. Uh, I could be wrong, but you know, that's a long straight. I mean, if people have got DRS from the beginning of that straightaway, everybody else is gone. It could be a conga line. I hope not. But No, the, the start finish line is actually pretty short. Uh, so if you got a DRS there, it's not a long DRS. The two other straights, especially the last straight before the last corner, that is a very long straight, like a very, very long straight. I think it's. And you come out of a slower corner that it's much easier to, to follow and be closer to people. I think they really did a good job designing the track where you can actually pass. I mean, like like the other long straight, you come out of a difficult corner and I think you won't be as close as you want. But I think the straight is going to be long enough that when you open that DRS, it's going to make a massive difference. So it, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of a place where you wanted to have probably a ton of downforce. So you're really good through the corners and the break-ins, but then you're going to be, you know, sitting so slow on the straights. So, you know, the teams will have to compromise with the setup a lot here. And I think that's going to be cool. It's going to be cool to see, you know, do you start 
on Friday with really high downforce and, and just run the high downforce the first day when the truck's really new and dirty, just yeah. to be, you know, on the smarter side and the safer side? Or do you just go with whatever you think you need to run and just get comfortable with it? You know what I mean? It's yeah. There's a, a lot of unforgiving corners that I think is really cool. You know, there's a really tight chicken. Like you go up to like a, like an exit ramp and then you just turn really tight left and right. And it's like tight left, tight right, and then 90 degrees into the back straight. But that tight, it's really tight. Like I think if you... In qualifying, if they try to overcommit to that and they get over the curb on the exit, they're gonna go boom, boom into the tires. You know, they're gonna hit the wall there. And it's it, and it's a genuine street course. You know, what I mean, most. You know, I mean, there's a lot of the apexes are walls, and I think that is really, really, really cool. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like a lot of places like with the IndyCar when you go to the street courses, they kept moving the walls away and putting curbs. But the beauty of a street course was that the, you know, that the inside barrier, it was the apex and you were driving to the wall. And if you did it well, you were right on the wall. You were not on a curb and you couldn't ride the curb. You either bounce up the wall or you did it right. And yeah, I think that it. was really cool. That's It's different when you don't have curbs and you've got a wall sitting there. That's a whole nother animal. You could, there's no riding curbs. You're just there's staring no riding at a curbs. wall. Yes, there's not. Oh, I just bounce off the curb. If you bounce off the curb in the in the old world, you're like put in the fence. Oh, we need to give drivers more more of a view of where they're going. I'm angry. I don't know. <laughs> Juan Pablo, you sound upset on this one. It's like, come on, guys, man up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You what do you it. think the What do you think the track is going to do? Because it's new asphalt. I mean, in the heat, that that was the one big question I had. In this heat, we all, you and I both know, because I'm in Tampa, you're in Miami, the humidity and the heat, a lot of these drivers are absolutely just not used to that kind of heat and humidity. The Verstappens, uh, Leclerc, these guys, you know, Australia was one thing. But it's not Miami. It's not that kind of humidity no, and that kind of heat. Australia, honestly, Australia, when we go to Australia, we used to go to Australia, it was hot and, and it wasn't that hot. You know, the time of the year we went in Melbourne, it wasn't yeah. crazy hot. It was normally pretty chill. But like Bahrain, when they went to Bahrain, it was hot. When they did, you know, um, Saudi was hot. I know they even raced a, a night at Saudi, but it was very hot. Uh, I think what the, this is more like a Malaysia weather. I was talking to some of the engineers and and they all just stop and sweat and said, does it remind you of Malaysia? And they were laughing at me because they said it's just the same weather. And and the crazy thing with Miami right now, about a, two weeks ago, the rain started. You know, the, the humidity yeah. rain season started. And, and yesterday was a great example. Like, it wasn't raining on the truck. And we left and a mile away, it was pouring raining. So we might get some of that. I don't know what the forecast is. But, you know, with Miami, it's... it's it's very hard to predict because it's not weather. It's not like a weather front's coming. It's just, you know, it just comes up, pops up, rains, and it yeah. goes away. Yeah, the daily it shower. Could, you know, it's a daily thing like day we get here in yeah. Tampa. Same thing. Yeah. 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 And it's a five-minute shower. I know. That's right. And That's then right. the steam and, comes off the track, and it's yeah, like, but the cra wow. Yeah, exactly. And the problem is if the rain is so narrow, it might get half of the truck wet and half of the truck dry. It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I, totally. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's really cool. Uh, you you got to give like a billion thumbs up. And I think, uh, you know, as Rob said at the beginning of the show, you know, I think the impact on Miami, the city, the culture, I think is huge. I think people are starting to realize how much F1 can do impact worldwide. You know what I mean? It's, it's such a big boost for the city. I, you understand the people that live near there that you know they're used to football games and you know fifty thousand people sure. blah, 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 to an event this big where they've been working on it and trucks and things i think through the years it's going to get better because the 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 payment is there there's a lot of the things there already that are going to be much easier to put together uh i think the track this year will be very good with the grip level uh it'd be interesting to see through the years how how the degradation of the pavement goes sitting in the sun you know how you know miami really cooks every payment so i oh, think yeah. that it'll be a surprise for them every year they come like the operation of the truck will be different and the degradation will be higher so it's going to be fun to watch i mean 
there's there's so many tricky corners and long corners and blind corners and that it, it's fun. Like yesterday, I got to drive a, a McLaren P1 around. Oh man! Oh, <laughs> keep rubbing it in, Juan. Keep rubbing it in. <laughs> I couldn't. You know what I did? I'm not gonna lie to you. I when I got out of McLaren P1, I went McLaren P1 price. I'm like, oh, I'm not getting one. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty amazing and uh it's you know i have i do have car. a question yeah it's a beautiful car hey i have a question for you you were bringing up the fact that the the residents there and you think behind the scenes uh, are are any of those lawsuits that maybe they bring to the table after the race is gone to try and stop it for next year or do you think now that it's in place, it really has a it has a home there? And I think it's scheduled for the next 10 years. It's supposed to be on the calendar. Do you think they can fulfill, fulfill that contract? I do think so. I think, the, as you said, the lawsuits are always going to be there. Somebody's willing to, you know, finding ways to either complain about noise, complain about anything, because that's, you know, people can do that here in the States. But I think the city and the state and the government will realize you know i mean how big of an event it is it's like yesterday was wednesday and where they were doing the party it was packed like at night that place was packed with people we could I I couldn't believe how many people for the concert and everything it's yeah. unbelievable i mean this place the race sold out in a day it oh. did yeah i have a buddy of mine who tried to get tickets for a client and literally for two tickets paid about two thousand dollars. I mean the the, the price might yeah, I know. That seriously. It was a good deal. No, no, yeah. no. I am serious. It's like if you well, they're going for six to buy, grand. Yeah, general admission, general admission, just to walk on the grounds. It was you know, I mean people were reselling for nearly a thousand bucks because yeah. there's no tickets. That's what it's, he got his general tickets. Yeah, yeah so twenty two thousand dollars for like uh for hospitality for one of the suites yeah the thing is what people don't realize is yes it's a lot of money but in f1 when you're used to maybe to like an ascar suite or an indycar suite and you come to from one suite is a different animal oh, like yeah. like the show is bigger the suites are bigger everything is bigger and better i've been yeah, there so all three, my question so. real quick i'm sorry juan is that uh you know we have Obviously, uh, Austin, we now have the Miami GP. And coming next year, the third Vegas. race, Vegas. Is the, the U.S. a market that's big enough for those three races? Or Easily. could it actually bring more to the table? But if you think about it, who would have thought Kata would succeed with it? Yeah, yeah. in the beginning, they didn't. And they but didn't, they but they have. They, yeah. they sold out. I heard they sold out in a day, too. So this is what happens. It's like a lot of people in Mexico want to go maybe to the U.S. And, and see the Austin race that is close because to get tickets in the Mexico race is very difficult. So they say, oh, you know, we go and we'll go shopping. That's how, you know, how, that's how when we lived in Colombia, that's how we saw it. People, you have people like from Palm Beach and New York, you know, people from the north that have houses in Palm Beach and everything, they want to come to the race. And you got people from South America that want to come oh, to the yeah. race. Then when we go to Vegas, it's going to be a different crowd. Again, you got the locals, and then you got people from San Francisco, LA. You got to remember, a lot of the tech companies are involved in F1. Yeah. And a lot of the U.S. companies are involved in F1. So if you can bring three races to their market, it's huge. And I think that's where I think Liberty has done an amazing job with it. Yeah, um, I would agree. You know what I mean, they, they really understand where they need to go, uh, and they're growing. You know, they keep growing. They understand. You know, in my time, we used to do more miles testing than racing. Like, yeah. we would race on a Sunday, and then Monday, like, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we were in a track testing. Now, you know, I mean, instead of spending all that money testing, you know, let's just go racing more places. Do you think, Juan, do you think that it can actually take a fourth race? Because Penske is meeting with the head of F1, the new CEO, and that just happened. And everybody's wondering why is he meeting with, you know, meeting with them. And they're being very tight lipped about it. I mean, this is a big market. And obviously there's explosive growth in the U.S. Uh, Bloomberg, the investment, uh, an investment publication, they came out and they said that it's the Americanization of F1. Now, Zach said he didn't, Zach Brown, he said that he didn't really 
believe that the Americanization of F1 should take place. What do you think? I agree with that. I, I agree with Zach. I think there's no, but I don't think, I think F1 understands that they cannot go the American way and just be racist in America, but they understand it's an important market as, you know, the mainstream racist in Europe. You know, they understand that the British Grand Prix is really important. And they understand that Monaco is really important, that Monza yeah. is really important. They understand, you know, figure out how we keep a race in Germany because, you know, Mercedes, you know what I mean? They really do understand, but they understand, you know, by doing races in the U.S., you, co you cover a lot of the Americas as well. But, you know, you need to expand. You know what I mean? It's like South America or the Caribbean doesn't have a race, for example, and they're talking about it. And I think that will be another cool place to have. Um, you know, when you race in Europe, do do you like, like if you look at where the French Grand Prix is, there's the facilities. I mean, the place is unbelievable, but there's no hotels nearby. There's not much. Like I, be, I was there not long ago with my kid testing, and and you go, why are F1s racing here? You know what I mean? I understand that the that the race is really important and everything, but you can hear my wife on the back. Yes, we can. <laughs> and she's going. Shh. <laughs> That's uh, and she's gonna and she's gonna open the door. Yes, we're in the middle of it. <laughs> they want the air conditioning. I don't blame them. Say hello. Hey. <laughs> no, she's not my wife. She's my friend. My wife's friend. My wife is here. Somewhere. Okay, yeah. make no that distinction. I, that's quickly. Back to <laughs> Fuck this guy. Don't. <laughs> you can't do that to us Juan you know that <laughs> all right so Juan you were talking about your kid Sebastian talk about what he's going on because that yeah. that's you know you talk about next generation and these other kids that are coming up as a father obviously you have some connections and you can work them through the systems but you know for those dads out there that are trying to do that talk about what your son's gone through and what he's uh, trying to accomplish, and where do you think he's going to end up? Is he's got more talent than the old man? Um. So, so let's start with the order. The order that you asked me is why would I tell the parents? And uh, first thing I would tell them: don't spend the money in carding as much as you're spending. I think carding is really important, but don't help your kid win spending money. I agree don't with that go, a thousand percent. Don't don't go and buy the better motor. Don't go buy the, the more things. Don't. He's got to figure out himself. And he, he needs to have enough equipment that when he's on his A day and does everything right, he might have a shot at winning. Because That's he needs to learn to work for it. Because most of the people want to win with money. And when you win with money... It's going to get to a point in your career that your money doesn't really matter. And when your money doesn't really matter, you're going to struggle. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the I other think part, Stroll I think. Let's prove that. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult. Um, but, you know, on the other side of the coin, you know, my kid, I think it, it's hard because it's my kid. But at the same time, I tell, I try to tell people, and I'm, I'm, and it's the truth, I'm really hard on him. You know, I've talked to you right before and, like I don't, I don't, I'm not nice to him when we're racing. I'm, I'm an, you know, an asshole. I'm, I, I call it how I see it, and, and the bloody kid is very good. It's like we run together in Sebring, and it's unbelievable how good he is right now. It, it's crazy. It's just he and and he's learning to be his own self critic. It's like I looked at the qualifying in months and he said, Hey, you did a good job. You know, you screw up one corner, but other than that, you put a hell of a lot together. And he goes, No, I sucked. I'm like, Okay, no, you didn't. I'm like, Yes, I did. I should have done better. I'm like, And that, when you when you do it in a constructive way, I think it's very good because it means that you're paying attention to the details. And when you pay attention to the details, you're going to get better and better a lot quicker. We're talking to Juan Pablo Montoya. It's Michelle Rahal. I'm Rob D'Amico. This is Cooks and Cars, the Race Day Nation edition. I appreciate everybody who tuned in, getting ready for the Miami GP this weekend, which is going to be a spectacular event for the world of racing. And when we say that, we mean that you know when you have the success of one sport, it's also bringing up the success of other sports as well, especially open wheel. And we all know IndyCar could definitely use that help 
right now because they're they're struggling a little bit. We see the crowds, but we we know that they have a good product. It's great racing. Um, so how do you think you know with this type of race in the U.S. Uh, will help open wheel here in America? I think the timing of this race is great because you know IndyCar is on track next week, and it, they were on track last week, and then we got the 500 in two or three weeks. I think the time people are paying attention and. And, you know, Indy puts a hell of a show. They have a hell of a product. So it'll be exciting. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what they can bring this year. And, you know, I'm excited to take part of it and, and see what happens. Well, they're going to try. I mean, they're, they're talking about the model being more ovals. How do you feel about more ovals and that being their identity? Because that seems to be where their Penske's gravitating towards. Um, the more ovals... The problem is, it used to be like four or five street courses, four or five road courses, and four or five ovals. And now it's like you got two ovals or three ovals only. So, do they need to expand on the ovals? Absolutely. I do. I'm 100% agree with that, with that, that they, they're missing out. Yeah, I mean, a championship that has always been very cool on basically everything that you race. Um, and I think they've got to do a better job. You know what I mean? They've done a great job with the series. The series is definitely in the up. That is great. Uh, but it's, I do agree that it's missing ovals. Uh, you know I mean, I don't know if they cannot go to the ovals where NASCAR goes or how does that work. Uh, you know what I mean? That's very political. I'm, I'm not sure how it works. But, I mean, we used to go to California. It was fun. You know what I mean? They went to Vegas. We used to go to Homestead. Uh, there's a lot of places, uh, you know what I mean? I know it's difficult, but I know they want to go to places where the promoters are excited to have them, but I think it's important to go places where people watching are excited to watch it too. I'll switch gears a little bit. Obviously, you used to race NASCAR as well. NASCAR is doing a bunch of different things. They did the Coliseum deal. They've done, you know, uh, some dirt racing yeah. at Bristol. What do you think of the, you know, some p people call it gimmicky or whatever, how do you see that? Because it is to me, I love that the fact that now they actually do more road racing, which is awesome. But the problem is I'd love to see at a street race. I'm not a big dirt guy. I feel like it's a little gimmicky, but listen, it adds to the championship and they seem to pack the stands for it. So you got to remember that people that race NASCAR came from dirt. Yeah. All the good old boys and all the young guys there, they all race dirt. So when you race dirt all the time and you grew up in dirt and you look at a guy like Larson that every weekend is racing dirt, you know, the dirt guys and the kids, uh, you know, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a good way of connecting the the career that, you know, it's kind of telling, now, you know, what, what was the thing they called the NASCAR roots or the NASCAR, you know, lo the local track. Yeah, the roots, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's like going back to the local tracks. It's kind of showing people this is the way of doing it. Don't, you know, if you want to come to NASCAR, don't don't waste your time karting. Go dirt racing from when you're young. Hey, real quick before we head out here, I know you're busy. You got the family in the car, and you're enjoying the weekend down there in Miami. Uh, some of your hobbies, you still doing the RC planes and all that stuff, putting I together some models. That. Um, I love doing that. I was doing that. I promise, uh, I moved to Europe and I have nowhere to do them at the moment. And I have all my plates here, planes here in the States. So I haven't done it. I would love to do it again. It's just, it's just no time at the moment. Yeah. I'm sure in a couple of years, I'm going to be flying again. The problem is right now, you know, I'm running around like crazy. And, and I mean, it's, it's, it's hard because, you know, working really hard to help my kid raise and everything and myself, my career and, and everything, so we just non-stop. And then uh, still cooking on your big green egg? <laughs> I'm waiting for my big green egg, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I, knew I, I was a little afraid to answer that question. <laughs> but, but no, uh, no, no. yo, it, it's coming. It, you know that. I know, I know it's coming, and, and it's perfect because right now it's finally starting to warm up, and I'm really excited. You know I mean? I, I found a place in Italy that they sell the, the briskets, Yep. Uh, and they sell Wagyu brisket, so I'm pretty excited Ooh. about that one. Oh, yes, Very I know. Nice. So, so I'm you excited about that passing, one. You guys are passing recipes back and forth, right? Oh. I love it. I, I'm, I'm really lucky because, like, we do a lot of pizza. We used to do a lot of pizzas. And yeah. a friend of mine works in a restaurant, an Italian restaurant, and the pastry department was doing the dough for us. And 
Oh, there you go. Like proper one. Spectacular, Real. man. All right. Hey, great, we, what, man. Great. what do we what do we expect on Sunday for this race? What do you think we're gonna see here? I think you're gonna see an amazing race. Uh, I think you might see some people getting it wrong. Um, but I think you're gonna see a lot of passing back and forth because if you look at you know, people are gonna pass you in, in the back straight and then you have one, two, three, four, five corners for the other long straight. So I think you might get passed and then two or three corners later, if you can keep up, you're going to get a hell of a run and you're probably going to be able to pass again. And then if they have that third the third zone and the start finish line, you might even fight back again. So uh, I think it's cool. And as you said, you know, the, the straight is so long that if the DRS opens early enough, you could see you could be passing two people. Like the guy with the no oh, DRS yeah. is, is going to struggle. Yeah. Well, that and brings then... into that into question whether or not one opens DRS, he gets passed, and then he DR, and then he opens the DRS, so they're swapping yeah, like, back and forth. That is great. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I was stopping so, in Leclerc the last time. They were complaining. I thought it was great. Well, they always complain. You know what I mean? Everybody, it's well, it's racing car. Everybody, Everybody complains. complains. They, yeah. You know, we're you know we're race car drivers. You wouldn't complain. We're not doing our job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we expect the same as a Ferrari Red Bull kind of deal? Or we we think McLaren could get up on that podium? Uh, I don't think Mercedes really has much here because of all the issues they've had this year. But uh, is it the same kind of group that we're looking at? It'd be interesting to see with the low downforce if Mercedes can lower the car and get yeah. away from the purposing by taking a lot yeah. lower downforce approach. And if they do, the, mar- the car might come to life. Yeah, you know, I mean, it'd be interesting to see because if you have less purposing here than normal with the lower aero package, you know, lower downforce package, it might it might come to life some cars that you go what? But I would assume that the Ferrari and the Red Bull are going to be up front for sure. Yeah. yeah, and then real quick with the Andretti thing going on with F1 putting his his uh um you know putting them on notice. I got the money. We're ready to go. Do you think having the three U.S. Uh, GPs in the States um, with another American team, if we can, you know, we got ha- Haas, obviously, but listen, B team with Ferrari, all that stuff, it's great. But we'd like to have a competing team here in the U.S. that can go against the the conglomerates of uh, Red Bull and Ferrari and things like that. I think it's possible. I think Haas have done a, a great job, and I think Haas' approach was the right one to, to start the team. You know I mean, through the years, he might get better and might find an engine deal through the years. But if you don't, yeah, you know I mean, if you probably look at what Andretti was thinking, it would be probably like a Renault engine or something. So he would have been in the same picture of of a Haas or somebody else. I'm not sure, yeah. but it's not easy. You know, what I mean, it's not easy and. Uh, I'm not sure it will happen. Uh, you know, from what you hear, at least the rumor wise is that they kind of turn him away. So I don't know. We'll see. All right. Juan Pablo Montoya live from the Miami GP this weekend. Uh, you know, a champion driver. You've won Monaco, the Indy 500. You name a race, you've been there. Uh, as one of those races, uh, I, I think it was Lamar that you're trying to get for that triple crown. You ever going to make it back to the track and, and try to get that win? But we won last year in class. You know I mean, so it, it's kind of funny because in the class we ran, we had nine cars, and the class for overall had three cars or four cars. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. You know what I mean? It, it's very political and everything. But oh. you know, I was happy to get the Le Mans win in class, and, it's and that's it. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, if you ask me, it's very simple. If you ask anybody if I won Le Mans, I actually did, whether you like it or yeah, not. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We appreciate. I seriously, I'm honored for you to come on the show during this we special weekend. Thank you. Uh, I, thought we, you, I thought you were going to say, "I'm sure getting your egg." Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, hey, I'll get the text. You know that. No pressure, Rob. No pressure. Juan, Juan will be like, "Damn, Rob, get the." <laughs> I will. I, I, I did tell him I had like three or four weeks before I go back to Europe. So <laughs> okay. So. We'll handle that off air. But, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. You get me in trouble. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. All thank right, man. You. We'll see you. Thank uh, you. All right, man. Juan Pablo Montoya, so glad he could come on with us, cool, man. Very cool, man. Very cool.
He's such a down to earth guy. And I think you even said to me one time that, you know, everybody you've talked to that's dealt with Juan on a team or, you know, anywhere in a garage and it, it just a nice guy. He just, he's down to earth. He's one of us. He's just like everybody else. And, yeah. you know, he puts his pants on the same way we do. Right. It's just that. Just a hell of a lot faster. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> like a fireman. <laughs> I, I love how uh, his family started getting in the car. He's like, hey, come on, I dad, know. let's go. We got to go. <laughs> All right. I almost asked him, was that, well, is your friend in the back seat married? <laughs> yeah. Is she single? <laughs> All right. For Michelle Ray Hall, I'm Rob D'Amico. Thank you so much for watching today. We do appreciate it. Don't forget, you can follow us on our website, racedaynation.com, cooksandcars.com. You can follow me at Rob D'Amico, R-O-B-D-A-M-I-C-O. Michelle? You can find me on Facebook, just Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, Ray Hall, R-A-H-A-L. Not too many of us on Facebook with that name. And you can find me on Instagram at Michelle Ray Hall, M I C H E L E R A H A L, the number nine. Where that came from, still don't know. Nonetheless, that's where you can find us. I think I know where the nine came from. So I was in the no, post office the other day <laughs> and I saw the 10 most wanted. You were number nine on that. Uh, <laughs> I want to be number one. I mean, the hell number nine. Yeah, that's I right. Don't like, I don't like odd numbers, Rob. I like even numbers. Make, yeah, well, uh, you know, they'd have chosen eight. I'd have gone, okay, well, that was one of the numbers on my race cars. I could handle that or 10 right. or something like that. I have no idea. You get nine and you like it. You got yeah, it? Yeah, I've got no choice. <laughs> All Zuckerberg right. Zuckerberg isn't going to allow anything out of the ordinary. That's right. It's his All world. right. For Michelle Rahal, I'm Rob D'Amico. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this weekend for the Miami GP.